Let's think about, let's think about this exact situation, in fact. Let's go with boiling pot of water, so that's 100 degrees Celsius, okay? Let's go with 18 degrees, let's go with 18 degrees, okay? Now, perhaps what I want to know is how, what, like, what temperature is that water going to be after I've taken it off the stove, left it in the, the environment, and um, I want to know what temperature it's going to be after 10 minutes, say, okay? What I need is a piece of information. I need to know how quickly is this cooling, okay? So what I might do is I could say, as an example, so I've got my 100 degree water, so I've got my boiling water, I've got my 18 degrees as my ambient temperature, Okay. Now, obviously, if you got this as an actual question, you'd have a lot more details surrounding this, and there's going to be parts that lead you into it, but we only need the bare guts of it. To work out what happens after 10 minutes, this is my question. What I need, as you can see, right, having a look at, say, this equation here, right, we know that this is roughly how it's going to behave, but what we don't know, right, we know where it starts, uh, sorry, we know where it goes. We can work out where it's going to start in a minute, this value. But what I don't know is how quickly things change. So I need some kind of measurement. Okay? So let's suppose, just suppose, something reasonable. After two minutes, let's suppose I take a measurement. Get a thermometer, pop it in. Let's just say it's 70 degrees. Okay, okay I've got everything I need now. I've got all the conditions, I need to work out everything about this, and I've got a question that I'm gonna post this. What happens after 10 minutes, okay? Now, like I said, if you got this as an actual question, you can guarantee part A of this question will be to say, show that this equation satisfies this differential equation, because this is what growth and decay is about, right? This is the normal growth and decay, but this is modified a little bit, so it has some constraint. So part A will be to see, okay, can you do exactly what we just did here, differentiate, and show you get the differential equation out. So let's just um, be a bit sneaky, and let's just call that part A, okay? It's done, they always start that way, because you can't justify using this equation until you've shown, cool, this demonstrates the characteristic, the key characteristic of growth and decay, this differential equation. So let's suppose we've done that as part A, and now we're on to part B. Can we work this thing out, okay? Now we've got a couple of variables, uh, a couple of constants, I should say, that we want to evaluate. I want A and I want K. Okay. Have a look at what's on the board. What can I use to work out A? Because that's the, the easiest thing to work out. Yeah, when I have time zero, the temperature is known. Yeah? Uh, it's worth saying, I could do this in reverse, but it'd be a lot messier. So what I'm going to say is when T equals zero, I should say when time equals zero, the temperature equals 100, okay? So we've seen this before. This is just substituting it in, right? Now, because it's modified, uh, it's not just this simple one. It's just going to be a tiny bit different. So I'm going to say, uh, okay, here, here's my actual equation, here, which I've just shown in part A satisfies the differential equation. And I'm going to say 18 plus AE to the what? Which in this case is zero, equals the temperature, which I've just defined as 100, okay? So you can see here, oh, if all I want is A, then this becomes A times 1, which is A, and I'm just going to make it the subject. So, I subtract 18 from both sides, which is moving 82. Yeah? So you can see another reason why. I'm not going to call that T naught, because that is not, not, in fact, the temperature at time zero. Right? So I can say, therefore, T equals 18 plus 82. So I've taken care of A. I have one more constant to evaluate. Okay, and how am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? What piece of information am I going to use? Okay, so I had a time zero condition, and now I have some arbitrary time. In this case, it's time two. So I'm going to say, uh, yeah, I'm going to do it over here. When T equals 2, the temperature equals 70. So again, I'm just going to go straight at it all over again. So I'm going to go uh, 18 plus 82 e to the what? Minus 2k. Very good. Equals, and then this is my temperature that is known. That's 70. Yeah? So I'm just going to tidy up a little bit. What's that? 52? 52. 
I can do a division there because I have a common factor. And what do I do at this point? Because what am I after? Locks. I'm after K, so I'm going to take logs of both sides. <coughs> that leaves me with this over here and this over here. Mm -hmm. One last step, I'll step and I'll get K out of this. I don't really need those brackets. Ta da. Okay. Now, you will notice, by the way, at this point, Excuse me. Um, you're thinking, you might think back, oh, all my log stuff, right? I know stuff about logs. I could simplify this if I wanted to. But remember where this is going. Remember where that's supposed to fit. It's supposed to fit in here. Yes? This is my, uh, my equation for temperature. Okay? Not only, like being that this is the last constant I need to evaluate, not only is this going to go in, but the actual question says after 10 minutes. Okay? So therefore here, I can do this all in one here. I can say now when the time is 10. <clears throat> and I'm going to evaluate everything through. I've said before, because this um, value for k, which I've left exact, and you should always leave exact until the end, because it's a bit messy, some people will avoid writing it until blah, 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 blah and then they have to, because they just want to avoid writing it many times. But as you can see, I don't think it's that bad, and you can use it to your advantage. Watch. Um, I have my equation for temperature. It's 18 plus 82 e to the, okay, I'm going to snap this all in, right? So first, it's, it's minus kt. So I do minus, there's k, don't forget, it's got a minus as well. Minus k, and now what's my value for t? 10. 10, yeah? So I've got 18, 82, okay, I've got two negatives in there which are going to cancel. I've got a half and a 10. So this is e to the uh, 5 log 26 on 41. Do you agree with that? Now, you can reach for your calculator at home. That's fine. I'm not going to because I can still do a tiny bit of work here just to make this a little bit neater. Have a look at this, right? Do you agree? This is e to the power of, like, think about your index laws. This is e to the power of log 26 on 41 to the 5. Do you agree with that? Like a multiplication of powers. Mm -hmm. But e to the log x is just x, is it not? Right? So I can write this as 18 plus 82 times this. Okay. Now, I just like that a teeny bit better because it's just less buttons on my calculator. Um, you can push that through. You can make sure you hit the index button so you get your power, um, then you, whatever you want it to be. And you should get a number with a few decimal places after, right? Can someone give it to me? 20, 26? 26. I love how this is a competition. Mm -hmm. oh, I can press one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty much there. I'm pretty much there. What have we just um, established? Let's conclude this thing because the question says after 10 minutes, okay? Now, one of the cool things um, that actually you guys don't get to learn, general students do, is that when you get all of these measurements, right, you see how they're also the nearest degree? See how they're all to the nearest degree? So that is reasonable enough evidence to assume that there is, like, if I've got a thermometer, that the smallest unit on it was probably one degree. We call that the limit of reading, actually, in general maths. So therefore, even though it wasn't given to me and um, the, a normal question with all the proper details would, I'm going to round my answer off to the nearest degree. I'm going to assume that the error from here is going to match the error from here. Okay? So I'm going to say, after 10 minutes, Um, my water, which was boiling, will be 26 degrees. And I'm going to the wholest, the nearest whole number because um, that's what my original number So let's pause and let's think. Does this match our intuition? Is that something about right? Is that what you would expect? After 10 minutes, you've lost a heck of a lot of temperature. Why is that? Because yeah. it's an exponential. Okay, of course, because this is exactly what it's doing. I will point out as well, um, how, much, how, much, how much temperature was lost in the first two minutes? 30 degrees was lost in the space of two minutes. In the in, ensuing eight minutes, between that time and this time, how much temperature has been lost now? 40? 40? 40-ish, okay? So in other words, like not that different really, like 30 degrees, 40 degrees, it's in the same ballpark. It took two minutes to only lose, to lose that much and then it took another eight minutes to go much further. Why is that? 
Yeah, it's slowing down because it's proportional to its difference to the environment's temperature, right? And as that difference gets smaller, the whole the whole thing just slows down. Yeah. And just slows down.